This one degree outside video is brought to you by CrackX Foundation Crack Repair and Waterproofing. 40 years of prompt and economical service to New England homeowners, builders, general contractors, home inspectors, management companies, architects, and engineers. Be sure to visit crackx.com and mention one degree outside when you make your appointment for an incredible discount. It's a Monday. That means pattern predictions. Looking out to the next two weeks, meteorologist Matt Noyce here at the One Degree Outside Weather Network. If you don't have our app yet, it gives you access to all of our videos. Grab it. It's totally free. One Degree Outside Weather on both the App Store and Google Play. Lots of times we'll either dive in with the jet stream or with the 500 millibar pattern. What is 500 millibar heights? Basically, it's or quite literally, it's how high you have to go up in the atmosphere for the barometer read 500 millibars, which is a lot lower pressure than here at the ground. The reason it's important, it can show you basically average temperature through a large column of the atmosphere with the colder colors indicating lower heights or colder temperatures through the atmosphere and the warmer colors indicating higher heights or higher warmer temperatures through a column of the atmosphere watch what happens in the first week out of the next two week pattern by the end of this week you've got a big what we call ridge a big dome of high pressure through a deep layer of the atmosphere a lot of warmth building over the southeastern United States and the Bahamas. You look at this, and the first thing you may think is, all right, well, that must be it. I mean, when you get something like this setting up that's pretty strong, you've got a pretty good trough that's out of the western United States, you say, this must be a flip toward warmer than normal conditions for a lot of April coming for the eastern United States. Not the case. Why? Is it because this cold air that's coming down through southern Canada is going to fight back? Well, yes, indirectly, but not because of the setup you're looking at here. In fact, let's go forward a little bit more to this upcoming weekend and zoom the view out. This is a very unstable pattern at the jet stream level in the atmosphere. What you're looking at here is a dip of very cold air in the upper levels and mid levels of the atmosphere south of the Aleutian Islands. We call that a trough. There's also a big upper level storm here as well. Notice the very sharp ridge or warmth that we have building at the Pacific. Then you've got another trough that's very sharp, almost cutting off an upper level low in the desert southwest and your ridge that we looked at trying to build in the east. This is too sharp of a pattern. It's too short of a wavelength in the atmosphere for it to hold. It's unstable. When you get this kind of a dip with a rise, with a dip, with a rise, something has to give. And what's going to give in this case is going to be a significant pattern flip that occurs in the second half of the next two weeks. You're going to see the beat down of this ridge as watch what happens. That trough is too powerful coming out of the Aleutian Islands. It forces the ridge to expand east, cutting off a bit of that energy in the desert southwest, but essentially wiping this part of the trough out and allowing cold air from the North Pole and the polar vortex to spill back down through the Great Lakes and into the northeast and carving out a new trough. Now, as you head into, let's say, about April 8th, so we get toward the middle of next week, now you've got a more stable pattern. Now you've got a large trough, a large ridge, a large trough, and it's set up with that trough in the northeastern United States. What this tells us is actually the bulk of April probably sets up with this kind of a dip in the atmosphere over the northeast. So it's that's why I say it's a bit of a fake out in the first few days of the month, because look what happens. Even as we get out toward the middle of the month and the end of the two week period, we've still got that colder air and that trough in the northeastern United States. Now you've been cut off from the real deep cold by the North Pole, which by the way, starts to migrate to the other side of the Northern Hemisphere. So there is likelihood that as we head out toward the second half of April, and we'll talk more about this in the monthly forecast tomorrow, you probably see a little bit of a relaxing going on in terms of the cold across the Northeast. You can certainly see that if I put surface temperature on here for you, there's that warmth that's building when? Later on this week across the Southern and Southeastern United States, it does come up the Eastern seaboard. We do get a piece of that later this week, but watch what happens. As we go out through the upcoming weekend and into next week, we beat that down and wipe it out. Here comes the cold spilling down out of Canada into the northeastern quarter of the United States, and it doesn't stop all the way through the middle of the month. As warmth tries to recover elsewhere, it just can't do it here in New England. So what does that all mean? Well, it basically means that after you get this spike of warmth over the next few days it comes in, interrupted at midweek by a quick cool shot, you end up flipping to something that will be near or cooler than normal for a lot of at least the second half of the next two weeks. And we see that too with regard to low temperature, as you might imagine, not only a, a chance of frost on the New England average as we get to the middle of this week, but then again, you've got frost that'll come back into play and freeze conditions that come back into play next week as well, which is why we've been telling you, for those who've been asking, no, we're not doing our planting yet across uh, New England. So in terms of the chance of precipitation, you would expect 
with this kind of a flip-flop in temperature, you'd probably get a higher chance of precipitation, and you'd be right. Uh, one of those higher chances is focused as we get toward the warmer air, but especially as we get ready to make the pattern flip. As we get ready to go from building warmth to building cold, that drives up the chance of showers for the upcoming weekend. Yeah, another weekend that doesn't look that great right now. And then again, as we get toward the end of next week, and into next weekend, for that matter, as well. This might sound like a familiar pattern. We did it with snow during the winter, and now we do it with rain into the spring. You can see over the next 10 days, you've got a big stripe of about two inches of rain that comes up higher amounts when you get down to the south and west. But for us, we'll take what we can get because we're still chipping it away at a moderate drought that continues for a lot of New England here, and the water table could use a bit more. In terms of snow, you would expect, remember we looked at that really sharp trough that digs out in the west for a brief time, right? So you'd expect the biggest snow would be there, and it is. Here at home, it's funny, April can actually be very kind to the mountains of Maine, and it looks like that may be the case over the next 10 days as well, at least in terms of maybe two to as much as six inches when you get up into the summits. A reminder that as the weather changes, we always appreciate your support, and so many of you have been getting the gear, swag.1degreeoutside.com. We appreciate each and every one of you. That's the way things look for the next two weeks, but we'll have a monthly forecast coming up tomorrow, the first weekday of April. Look forward to seeing you again with updates all the time at 1degreeoutside.com. Atop the home screen of that free One Degree Outside weather app.